This video is going to show you how to run a Cruscal Wallace test in SPSS. It's going to show you how to write it up in APA format and how to produce effect sizes for it as well. I'm going to show you actually two methods of doing this. If you want to jump towards the more complex method that gives you some pairwise comparisons for differences between individual groups, you can jump forward to this time and that will take you to the start of the second section of this. A Kruskal Wallace test can be viewed as a non parametric equivalence to a univariate ANOVA, in as much as we use it when we have a between subjects variable with three or more conditions to it. The example we're going to look at today is a relatively straightforward data set in which we have a between subjects variable of political ideals and a dependent variable of how much people value others. So if you look at our variable view, so our variable political ideals and we have three different conditions we have condition one are libertarian two classic liberalism three democratic socialist and that is nominal data because people in one category or the other and then our dependent variable is value others and this is a one to five likert scale on how much you value others well-being and um, it's ordinal data because it's an attitude scale and it's gone from one not at all to five very much so so this is ordinal data our dependent variable as it's an attitude scale if you look at the distribution of our data we get a histogram for our dependent variable what you can see is that we've got a bimodal distribution there's six people so there's quite a number of people who say one not at all and um, the most common being five very much so the least common being three no strong feelings either way so we've got an unusual distribution of the data and we also as an attitude scale it's technically ordinal data so we're going to analyze this using a Kruskal Wallace test a Kruskal Wallace test can be done two ways. The most simple manner of doing it is if you get to analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and then k independent samples. You see there's one above that says two independent samples, that's your Man Whitney test and you've got two samples. K independent samples means any other number of independent samples greater than two. So we've got three samples here, we've got three different conditions, so we want to compare them. So we click on that, and it gives us our test for several independent samples window. Kruskal Wallace is our default test, so we'll be keeping it as that. And then we've got our test variable list and our grouping variable list, and again it's quite similar to the univariate ANOVA window. So within the grouping variable box, this is our condition. So political ideals, we click that in there, and you see it's got question mark. And then it, you need to define the range. So you need to define the number of different conditions there are. So we click on define range. Minu minimum and the maximum. We've got three conditions. So it's minimum one, the maximum of three. And click continue. And now the range of the experimental conditions is put into there. So for that, we need to click across value others. And that's our dependent variable. So it's now going to look at if there's any significant difference between our experimental condition, our political ideals, and how much people value others. So we can click on options. We can ask for descriptive statistics. This will give us a mean. Uh, but within this data set, the mean actually doesn't, is not a particularly good measure of central tendency. As you remember from the histogram, it's actually bimodal. So we see quite a lot of scores of five and four and quite a lot of scores of one but very few of three so we're going to ask for this anyway just so you can see why it's not the great particularly good measure we click continue and then we click on ok and this gives us our output it's a um, straightforward output so this is our descriptive statistics table this is i wouldn't particularly recommend using this because as you can see if you look at the mean score it's 3.5 well we know very few people scored three in fact the most common group is five and 
scoring one was more common than scoring three. So this isn't a particularly effective measure of central tendency. This is the actual cross score wallace test, the calculations, and that is a non-parametric test. It's based on the ranking of data. Um, so we get actually a mean rank. And as you can see from the mean ranks, the libertarians have a much lower mean rank than the classic liberalism and the democratic socialists do. So generally, from looking at this, you can see that generally speaking, the libertarians place um, a lower value on other people's lives than the classic liberals or the democratic socialists. If you look at our test statistic, this is what is critical. It actually produces you what's called, what is a chi-squared statistic, but it's reported as an H, capital H, cross school wallet H test. And you can see from our asymptotic significance, we have a p-value of p less than 0 0.001. So we could write this up along the lines of, there was a significant difference in the extent to which people value others' lives between different political views, and we'd report the chi-squared as a hate statistic, give our degrees of freedom, and degrees of freedom is basically k minus 1, the number of conditions minus 1, and we'd report our p-value, in this case we'd report it as p less than 0 0.001. You can also report an effect size. SPSS won't automatically produce you an effect size, and there's a few different ways you can produce an effect size for this. Uh, I think the most simple manner is the one I'm going to explain to you now. What we can do is we can produce an effect size of eta squared. This is similar to the effect size of partial eta squared that SPSS actually produces for an ANOVA. So the eta squared effect size is a relatively simple calculation in this case. It is simply the chi-squared statistic divided by n minus 1. So in this case, our chi-squared statistic is... 21.19 and we divide that by 29 and this gives us our effect size of an eta square of 0.73 and we'd include that in our write-up as well so now I'm giving that reader a bit more information. The eta squared effect size is essentially the percentage of variability in the data that's accounted for by our independent variable so political affiliation accounts for 73% of variation in the extent to which people value others' lives. So we took we can show probabilistic an effect here, and we can give an effect size as well. One thing is actually missing from this is what you could argue is well, what about the the differences between conditions? In this example, it's pretty clear that your differences are going to be driven by a significant difference between libertarianism and classic liberalism, and libertarianism and democratic socialism, these two aren't going to differ, they're very close to each other. Your data may not be as clear as this, the differences between ranks may not be that obvious. If you want to produce some pairwise comparisons for it, there's another method of doing a cross call wallace test. You could, if you wanted, do three-man Whitney tests and compare the differences, but we could also use the different method of producing a cross call wallace test to do this. This other method is a little bit more complicated to produce, However, it does give you this little bit of extra information. It does give you actually quite a range of different things to look at when you produce it. So in order to do this method, we go to Analyze, and we go to Stilton non parametric Test, and then we go to Independent Samples. So this gives us this non parametric Test, two or more independent samples. This will produce lots of different tests. And we need to tell it to, do we want to do a cross school was. We click on Customize Analysis, and then we click on Fields, and then you can see we've got quite a similar box to what we had before, Test and Groups. Well, Groups is Political Ideals, and the Test Field is Value Others. So we've told SPSS what our grouping is and what our dependent variable is. Then we go to Settings, and it can automatically choose your test based on the data, but we know that we want to produce a cross school wallace. This is where we get our pairwise comparisons. It's default there, multiple comparisons, all pairwise. You can set it to none, it won't give you any of those things at all, but we want all pairwise comparisons. Once this is done, we click run, and it produces you this rather unusual looking output. It says what the null hypothesis is, 
the distribution of value of others is the same across categories of political ideals. So there's no difference in the distribution of this data. It tells you what the test is and that the test is statistically significant. And then it just says reject the null hypothesis. If you hover over the decision, it says double click to activate. And we can double click on that. And this gives us our model viewer. This is a window you may not be familiar with. You can see it gives us some box plots here. And this again, you see it gives us our Kruskal Wallace statistics, gives us our total then. A test statistic, which is identical to what we had before, our degrees of freedom, and the asymptotic significance. And if you did this method, you just write this up accordingly as you've done before. Now, hidden away at the bottom, you can see these little windows here. If we click on this, we can select pairwise comparisons. If we click on pairwise comparisons, it gives us this table now. And this is basically the set of comparisons between libertarian and classic liberalism, libertarian and democratic socialist, and classic liberalism and democratic socialist. We can actually use this to see that, as we could tell really by looking at our ranks, there's a statistically significant difference between libertarianism and classic liberalism, and between libertarianism and democratic socialism. However, there is no statistical difference between classic liberalism and democratic socialism here. And we, could just, we can just write this up accordingly. We also have an adjusted significance, so it just multiplies the p-value by the number of comparisons. So essentially, you could have a Bonferroni corrected pairwise comparison if you wanted to. It makes absolutely no difference whatsoever in this case. Um, it'd be a decision that you'd make before the event anyway, whether you should be doing a Bonferroni correction or not. And we'd write this up accordingly. So after we've written up our Kruskal Wallace test, we could add pairwise comparisons, show libertarians, place lower value on the lives of others compared to classic liberals given our p-value, and democratic socialists, again, give our p-values. And then we can state the class, classic liberals and democratic socialists do not differ, and give the p-value there as well. And because we've got an actual number there, we can write that as p equals as opposed to p less than, which we've done in these other examples.